Okay, good. So now we're going to go through this thin film interference. Uh, uh, this is absolutely in IB. Absolutely in IB. So you will expect to see this in a IB paper too. Cool? So let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to guide you through eventually to an important outcome that you have to remember and how, know how to apply. So let's take a look. If I got the light beam over here that comes in over here, and the light beam goes into this plastic film, say for example, of thickness T. Now, first of all, if the refractive index of this film is n, the speed of light in the film will be. Come on. If the refractive index is n, the speed of light in the material will be c over, c over n. Correct. Excellent. So the time taken, time taken will be for it to go in and out, will be two t divided by c upon n, which is two n t divided by c. Still okay. Simple distance divided by time, a uh, distance divided by speed. If you're lost at this point of time, I'm a little bit worried already. <laughs> it's like distance equals to speed times time kind. Okay, can I? Good. Now, therefore, can you see that if I got a reflected ray over here, let's call this ray A, do you agree that the distance that this ray A travel, when this is just inside and just before it comes out, the distance will be equal to the speed of light in air, because light, ray A is traveling in air, times the time that we found over there, this time. Let me explain what this distance is. Uh. This distance is this one. Cool. Follow? Can I? Okay, therefore this is equal to C times 2NT upon C, cancels of 2NT. Can you see that this is the path difference between the two rays? Can you see this is literally the difference in path between the two rays. One that goes in, reflects up, and the other one that reflects on the top surface. And see, yeah, this is path difference. But hang on, it's not the end. There is another component of path difference. That's the tricky bit. Okay? Now let's take a look at if I got a string tied to a wall, and then I send a wave in that looks like this. Make a guess, how would the reflected wave look like? It is tied to the wall. So you just, make sense? Um, remember, it reflects, yeah? So what's the phase difference? How much do I have to shift this to get this? The path difference or phase difference is equal to 180 degrees, so which is equivalent to a path difference of lambda upon two. Yeah? So can you see that there are two possible, two path differences? One due to the distance that the light travels in the medium, the other one due to reflection. As you know, one literally due to the lagging behind, physical lagging behind. One due to the reflection. Now, using this, bringing this back to here, you need to remember it is in your syllabus to know that reflection of an optically denser medium, that means the N is higher, results in a phase shift of or path difference of lambda upon 2. Okay, now let's apply this back to here. So say this is air, this is H2O water, this is air. The reflection of light off here, is there a path difference due to reflection? Is it reflecting off a denser medium, an optically denser medium? It is, correct. So therefore, the effective path difference final is equal to 2NT plus lambda upon 2. This one, is it reflecting, reflecting off optically denser medium? No, it is reflecting off air. Right? Therefore, you plus 0. So therefore, the resultant path difference is this. Now, what do you do with this? If you want to see a maxima, this is what you do. Path difference, which is equal to 2NT, plus half lambda must be equal to m lambda for constructive interference. The condition still holds true. Path difference equals to m lambda still holds true. Just that you have to be careful that there is this portion over here. You have to be careful. Okay? I'll show you how I can play tricks with this. All right? But you have to be careful about this. This is usually the one that students don't forget. This is the one that students don't forget. Cool. Now, therefore, can you see that 2nt is equal to m minus half lambda? So this is the condition for constructive interference. Can you see that it is actually slightly different from what you remember? That it should be path difference. Uh, it looks like path difference equals to m plus half lambda, or m minus half lambda equals to destructive. Yeah. But actually it's constructive. 
because of this thing over here. Can? Must be careful. Huh? Now, therefore, path difference equals to 2nt plus half lambda equals to m minus half lambda for destructive interference. Yeah? Therefore, 2nt is equal to m minus 1 lambda, which is actually equal to m lambda because integer minus 1 is still integer. Right? So therefore, this is the condition for destructive. Can you see that it is actually quite tricky in the sense that you think that this is actually constructive? Ah, yes, you can see that. The, the overarching principle is always path difference equals to m lambda constructive, equals to m minus half lambda destructive. But the expression for the path difference, which is this one, can change accordingly. Let me give you an example of why. Say, for example, I got air, x, and y, where ny is more than nx and nx is more than n air. Let's take a look at the difference, yeah? Can you see that this path difference equals to 2nt still exists? It is always there. Agree? Reflecting off an optically denser medium, is there a path difference? Yes. Reflecting off an optically denser medium, got path difference? Yes. Now, it is plus lambda. So when you equate this to, say for example, uh, plus lambda equals to m lambda, can you see that now it is actually different from what you derive over here? Yes, correct. So you have to be careful about this portion. This is usually no problem. So you just need to check, in a nutshell, you just need to check the refractive index of the different layers. Can? Sorry? Uh, distance, of course. I mean, the two, basically, you see, you break it down into two parts. 2NT and the phase, uh, the path difference due to reflection. Once you see this as two different components, and the easy part is that two NT is always there. It's always there. Ah, the, ah, good question. Do you use the refracting index of X or Y? Where does the light travel? X. So you use X. I can make the question even more difficult. I can make the question even more difficult. You may want to actually think about this. Huh? If I put this as Y, X, Y, is it going to be the same method? Okay, before you, before we go on to this, before we go on, let, let's cut this for a while. Do you understand whatever is on the right of this line over here? This is important. Mm. Whenever I write path difference equals to m lambda, it is constructive. But when I shift this over, this is still the usual form they were familiar with. Lah. Yeah? The difference is, remember when I have air, x or water, air, there is only one lambda point two. So when I shift this over, the condition for constructive interference now look like it is destructive. But actually it is uh, constructive. You just have to be very careful with this one. Yes, 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 yes. Now, my, my preference is instead of you remembering, wow, x, y, z, then x, this condition, this con you will totally be confused. Just remember that there's always a 2nt. Yeah? And then the reflection, like the reflection part. And then you just get the expression for the path difference equals to m lambda for constructive, m plus half lambda for destructive. It will work it out by itself. You don't have to remember. Yeah? That the light travels and bounces back. Yes. Yes, correct. Yes, correct. Then it doesn't affect well because this one, this one, the light reflects off this medium. If I have a Z, it doesn't affect the reflection. Yeah. yeah. But of course, it gets more difficult. I can have multiple layers. And then no, I mean, yeah. Your question. Oh, okay. If it is a denser medium, oh, good question actually. If it is a denser medium, the model is like it is reflecting, it is trying to travel into a medium where it's more difficult to travel in. So when it reflects off, it reflects as though like it is a wave tied to an end kind of thing because it's more difficult to enter the wall. Yeah. For the less dense medium, it's like light. Uh, it's like wave. You remember the, the one where I have a string that is open end. Um, when it is, this is free to move. When I send a wave in like this, the wave that comes out will also look like this. Okay. Then you just go right through. There will be no reflection. Right. There's no. The reason why there's reflection of the surface is because of difference in refractive index. Oh, I don't know that 
In fact, there's an equation that gives the reflectance to be equal to n1 minus n2 over n1 plus n2 squared. So if you have n1 equals to n2, which is the refractive index, the reflectance is zero. Which makes sense, what? When you have light traveling in air, it just goes straight through. Uh, why would it reflect? If it reflects, it's because it's scattering off dust particles. Yeah? Ken? <laughs> D is the path difference. Oh, okay. You see, this expression is the distance that this light travel while this is still inside. It's, much, it's almost like, say, for example, you hit a, let's say, a race, you're in a running race, and then this person take a wrong turn. He think that this is the turning point, but this is the turning point. So this person runs, and then realizes, and then goes back. By then, this will be this ahead already. Yeah? <laughs> Can? Oh, okay, there's a, another whole lot of derivation that you can use, yeah. But this is definitely the equation, yeah. So the bigger the difference in refractive index, the bigger the reflection. So, so the first one is reflecting off the This is reflecting off the top surface, this is reflecting off the bottom surface. Wait, so it's both reflecting off the two and the Yeah, top surface and bottom surface. Two nt for the physical path difference. Yeah, physical. Then the lambda upon two, you, you look at the refractive indices. So should it be only lambda? Because both of them are reflecting off the glass. No, this is reflecting off glass. This is reflecting off the next layer is air. Yeah, it's air. You look at the next region. Okay? Reflecting off air. So the path difference is two nt minus? Plus. You always plus. I mean, you put minus or plus, the condition eventually will be the same. You put minus over here, then your shift over becomes n plus half lambda. It's the same form. Yeah? It's the same form. Still okay? So, so as long as it's uh, plus or minus half, it's constructive. Okay, uh, you must be very careful. Must qualify. In this situation, yes. But remember, just I show you that if you have another situation where y is denser than x, then it's another condition. It's opposite. Yes, correct. Of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. Now, hang on, uh, hang on. Uh. I'm going to ask you a question and you need to listen carefully and try to answer why this is so. Are these the only two reflections over here? How about, say, for example, tiu, tiu, how about this one? In fact, there are infinite number of reflections, all right? So why do I only consider the, these two reflections? Sorry? Yes, correct. After a lot of reflection, the intensity will be much lower. Remember the condition for constructive and destructive interference to be observable the amplitudes has to be similar. As you go through more and more reflection, the amplitude... Yes, correct. So that's why we only consider the first two. Cool? Must try question. Then you know whether you know. Yeah? Otherwise, I think I know, but actually I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, let me... If you go back... Let's go back to the most important, the crux. Huh? Do you understand why this is the path difference? Do you agree that path difference equals to m lambda is the condition for constructive interference? So I just need to shift over. It's a result of the shifting over. That's why I get this. Oh, m is integer. Remember, constructive interference is where path difference is integer multiple of wavelength. I cannot use n over here, which we always use because you mixed up the two n's. Also, I just need to find n Um, it depends on the question. It depends on the question. Yeah, can? Okay, let's go. Find the minimum thickness T minimum such that light of wavelength equals to 600 nanometers would such that light of wavelength. The second part is the interesting one. Here. 
find the minimum thickness of the water film such that the when light of wavelength 600 nanometers is incident, it appears bright. When I say this one, do you think it's maximum or minimal? Exactly. So you go back, you go back to here. What's the condition for maximum? Yeah? What's the condition for maximum over here? I use exactly the same scenario. Huh? Water, air, air, water, air. But the second part is the interesting part. Do the first one first, and then you see whether you can get the second one. Sorry? This one? Yeah, let's try. Let's try. So for constructing interference, 2NT plus, um, 2NT must be equal to half lambda. That's the minimum. So T is equal to lambda upon 4N. So therefore, it's 600 nanometers divided by 5.232. So about 100 over nanometers. One, so how many nanometers? 115. 115. Okay, can. Can. Really, really thin. Oh, I can I can change the I can change the question into oil. I mean, no, it's the thin film. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll talk about that later. Can. Let's just hold forward. But basically, the idea is that uh, for a uh, light at the particular for particular thickness of a uh, water film or whatever film that you have over here, it can actually appear bright or dark, dependent on uh, the okay. Okay. Let, let's KIV that the multiple color later. Okay, um, how about the second one? As the water film evaporates, what are you going to see? Just before, what, what are you going to see? Actually, I'm more interested in the moment just before the water layer totally evaporates. Bright again, because it's zero. Okay, let's take a look. It's interesting. Path difference, remember, according to what we derived just now, for this case, it is this one. Just, just before it totally evaporates, what's the value of T? Zero. So what's the path difference? So is it bright or dark? Dark. Correct. Of course, then you'll just be dis then you disappear. Already. I said just before it totally dis uh, evaporates away. So it actually appears dark for a very short while before it disappears. Can? Can? You'll find similar questions. The way that we can play around the question will be giving you different y, giving you different x's. Yeah? Okay. Now I'd like to challenge you. Since you're ASP. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, no. You must be challenged. And how shall I challenge you? Very simple, which is what I gave you just now x, y, um, and y, where n, y is lesser than n, x. Let's use a simpler case, and this is t. So can you derive the condition for constructive interference? n, y is lesser than n, t. So I got the same model. Let's use the same model. This one comes in, reflects off. This one comes in. So then find the condition. We are supposed to find the condition for constructive interference. Basically, we have to go through everything that I went through in this context. Sorry? 9230. There's no name, right? Probably insurance agent. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Okay, um, right, let's go. So do you agree that the same thing over here, the time that it takes to stay in the film, uh, film is 2t divided by c upon nx, which is therefore 2nxt divided by c. Still okay? No, let, let's take, I mean, be, because I'm talking about this one, the time it takes to go here. Yeah? So therefore, the d, which is, is equal to the speed of light in y times time. Yeah. 
Okay. Then the same thing, so path difference is equal to 2nx over ny times t plus lambda upon 2. Why the lambda upon 2? Because it's the same as air x air. I mean, it's the same because y's refractive index is lesser than that for x. So why not just conveniently blow out that, that, that n? What do you mean by blow out? Hang on, I don't understand what you mean by blow out. Cannot. It's different refractive no, index. It's yeah. But this, this I must emphasize now. Huh? This will never happen in your syllabus. It's always a, x, and then y or x. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, lah. No worries, lah. In five minutes' time, I'm gonna go back to the office. I got a charging cable there. No, uh, don't, don't, ignore. Basically, anything that's to the same meaning of ignore. Don't care. <laughs> it's weird, just, just let it run. Can, people? More confident of thin film? This is basically thin film, yep. No, because I took this time multiplied by the speed of light in Y. But C of light in Y is C over NY. So that's where the NX over NY comes in. Which part were you lost? From here to here, here to here, or here to here? How come the time is not? This is speed of light in Y because I'm trying to find the distance that this move, well, this is here. Yeah. Can, can you press the stop recording? Thank you. Um, stop recording? It's not that complicated. Aditya, just press stop.